What kind of accent do you have? It's cool. Quick question. I can't figure out your accent. Where are you from? I dig your accent, man. Really. My brain keeps telling me it's some form of Irish. Is that correct? Wait, are you German? Where are you two from? Your accent sounds Scandinavian. Are you Swedish? Are you Finnish? You sound Finnish to me. Yes, I hail from Finland. The land of thousands of lakes, heavy metal, ice and snow, where people drive fast and possibly die young. We have to stop because it came some stone or something through Timo's uh, seat. Up in the ass of Timo. Hello one and all, and welcome to this however many subscriber Q&A special spectacular. You asked and I will answer. Thank you so much everyone, both for the subs and the questions. There's actually more than I imagined. I was expecting to get like five or something, but you guys are a curious bunch, aren't ya? Anyway, there's a lot to go through, so without further ado, let's get to it. I love your avatar slash character. It's one of the best I've seen. But I have to ask, why a lobster in a top hat? Oh shucks, thank you ever so much. I can say that Corpu appreciates that a whole lot. She's the one who actually does all my art. I myself can't draw for shit. I mean, look at this. And now look at this. I'd say she captured my handsome side. So anyway, the origin, the genesis of the lobster. For that, we have to go back in time to the year 2000 something something. So it's the early years in our tale of love, and Corpu and I are sitting on the couch, watching the old idiot box, snacking, cuddling, as you do. So we are watching the umpteenth reruns of Friends, and it's that one episode where Phoebe just starts spewing falsehoods and lies about lobsters. Come on you guys, it's a known fact that lobsters fall in love and mate for life. You know what? You can actually see old lobster couples walking around their tank, you know, holding claws. Like... <laughs> you, have to, you have to picture lobsters. Lobsters do not in fact mate for life. They live in male-dominated harems. But the ridiculousness of the statement is obviously supposed to be the joke, so we'll leave it at that. Anyway, that line became sort of a meme between us. Corpu would call me her lobster, and I would reciprocate by giving her a nice firm pinching. Most lobsters may not be faithful dating-wise, but that's what makes me special, I guess. 15 years of pinching the same lovely lovely cheeks and still going strong. The hero part of the name comes from another pet name Corpu had for me. The Finnish word Sangari literally translates to hero, Although when used in certain context, it can also carry an ironic tone, as in a person who goes out and does anything rash. So when it came time to pick a pseudonym, I decided to combine the two most reoccurring names I'm already being called, hence Lobster Hero. So that's the origin of that. Now as for the top hat, that is actually an homage to the Moomin franchise, if you've ever heard of it. Originally a book and comic series created by Finland's very own Tuve Jansson, it's one of our most important cultural exports, with tons of different animated series and merchandise. It's especially popular in Japan, and my personal favorite iteration of the series is actually the Japanese-made TV show from the early 90s. In Finland, the Moomin are an absolute mainstay in the lives of Finnish children. Most everyone here grows up reading Moomin and watching the animated show, the father of the Moomin family, Moomi Papa, wears this exact top hat. I wanted to incorporate it to the design to kind of symbolize the genesis of my love for storytelling. For Moomin are among the first stories I remember ever hearing. The character himself is a level-headed father with the soul and aspiration of a storyteller, constantly in the midst of writing his own memoirs about the adventures he had in his youth. So there's also that. It was a long explanation, I know, but yeah, that's the whole lobster hero lore in a nutshell. Fish. Also, would you ever consider reviewing the dumpster fire graphic novel I Am Not Starfire in the future? So, as a general rule, 
I won't say never to any possibility. As for that pile of burning toilet paper, I don't believe I could find anything new to say about it. Like, I don't see myself finding the lobster hero spin that I could use to build the video on. I have read the thing, it's fucking awful. In short, the idea of a superhero's child feeling insecure and angsty when comparing themselves to their parents is not a bad one, but the execution is the most mean-spirited, misguided, selfish, egotistical, and just all-around unpleasant anyone could have ever done. It spits on a beloved comic book character, and a part of the DC universe that I actually like quite a bit, so I do hate it with all my fury. But to make a video on it, I just don't see it. However, I'll probably end up using it as a bad example of whatever story tropes I may end up talking about in the future, so I'll shit on it whenever that time comes. As for alternatives, in case you haven't already seen them, I'll direct you guys to the direction of Weekend Warrior and J Longbone. Both of them are great, they make some funny stuff, and both of them are underappreciated as all seen. Weekend Warrior made a classic review video of the comic, while Jay Longbone roasted the entire thing on her stream by reading through it with her buddies. Chaos ensues. Why did you start this channel? What inspired you? The age-old tale of having things to say combined with the ability to afford a crappy microphone. Honestly, I just love storytelling. It's my favorite form of art. Aside from the embrace of a loved one and the occasional decent drink, stories are the next best thing that offer me comfort in this increasingly shitty world of ours. Whenever I can just immerse myself fully into a beautifully crafted fictional world and just marvel at the architecture, so to speak, it's just an awesome feeling. It's a vacation, to put it simply. I appreciate good storytelling the craft of communicating complex ideas, visions of future, philosophies, human fates, the connection we have with each other and the world, all presented in an entertaining way. Great stories carry wisdom, the power to heal, they make us learn things about ourselves and understand our place in the world. The possibilities with storytelling are endless. It's a hobby that will never cease giving me joy and I guess I just want to share some of that enthusiasm with all you guys. What prompted you to tackle bad writing? You can watch the whole video I made about that stupid High Guardian Spice was bad because budget debacle. And there's your answer. In short, for as much as I love storytelling, I equally loathe the people who keep poisoning the industry with their awful ideas. For me, Every shitty story means a decent story that'll never get its time in the spotlight. Every time someone funds idiot creators, they throw away resources and opportunities that could have, and should have by all rights, gone to creators with actual talent. I alone don't have the power to change things, but the more people there are to point out the absolute state of the entertainment industry and the steady decline of standards, the better the chance we have that someday, maybe someday soon, things will start getting better. Which topic gave you the biggest headache? The biggest headache? Hmm. That must be High Guardian Spice as a whole. The sheer number of problems is just exhausting. Half the time I don't even mean to talk about a single topic for so long. But the series just keeps inventing new ways to piss me off in every episode. The best compliment I can give to the show is that it acts as an excellent never do this guide to any aspiring writer. If carrots are good for your eyes, can they dial a phone? You see, this is the thing. These are the questions that keep me up at night. Alas, I fear we may never find the answer. Do you taste good with butter sauce? I'll have you know, I am absolutely scrumptious with butter sauce. When will you do a face reveal? Not in a while. To be honest, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't feel at ease in front of a camera. I don't like being photographed or filmed. It's not that I don't feel confident or anything like that. I'm a handsome devil. It's just who I am. I'm more cozy working with this avatar here. 
conveying myself with my words and editing, rather than my face. That being said, revealing myself is not out of the question outright, but it would have to be for some special occasion, far into the future. Maybe a subscriber special not dissimilar to this one. What is your name? What is your quest? What is your favorite color? The name's right there. As for my quest, it's obviously to entertain you guys. And my favorite color? Do you really have to ask? It's obviously pink. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. It's red. It's the color of passion, and I got that in spades. Even though spades are black, ironically enough. Black is cool too. Put those two together, and you got yourself a dapper look right there. The relatively few videos of yours I've watched make me think you have single-handedly filled my life's quota of rolled R's. That is not a question, but I agree. Why do you cuss so much? You'll find that I throw around the F-bombs mostly in direct proportion as to how pissed off I am. It's a way of accentuating a point. When I talk about things I actually like, I rarely cuss. A part of it is also that I wish to fight back on the culture of censorship, on this platform in particular. One of my pet peeves is when YouTubers bleep out their own swears. It's utter cringe. Hey buddy, you wrote your script? You recorded it, you are in direct control whether or not you swear, so if you don't want to cuss, then just don't do it. But do not censor yourself afterwards. That's utterly asinine. In general, I fucking hate censorship of any kind. See what I did there? People should be free to say anything they want, and to be criticized for those things if someone finds them objectionable, Honest and raw back and forth. That's how things move forward. From 1 to 10, how bad is High Guardian Spice? So the 1 to 10 thing is something I do not personally like doing, because most people do not know how to use it correctly, and get mad when they see someone actually using it how it is meant to be handled. Simple example. To me, a 6 out of 10 is not a bad score in any stretch of the word. In fact, it's quite good. It's literally above average, so there has to be more good than bad in it, no? But that's not how it's usually handled. Most people view anything below a 7 as utter garbage, which just beats the entire point of having numbers 1 to 5 at all. Now, as a specification, if I were to use a number scale on the regular, I personally would actually use a 0 to 10 scale. That way, there are the exact number of scores above and below 5, which acts as the pure average. On that scale, a zero would be a theoretical disaster score, something that literally doesn't function as a product, like someone wiping their ass on a piece of paper and submitting that as animation. Something like that doesn't really exist, in the same way as a pure 10 is practically impossible. There has never been an utterly flawless work of art, and there most likely never will be. I'll probably end up making a whole video on this topic at some point, actually. But as a simple answer, on a 0 to 10 scale, I would have to give High Guardian Spice a 1. Story-wise, absolutely nothing works, and the presentation is so-so. So it belongs to the lowest category possible. But it is also a product that was finished and produced, and not simply random noise and shit stains on the screen, so it avoids the 0 score. Anything you've seen that is worse than High Guardian Spice? Objectively, I can't imagine a show that could fuck up anything worse than High Guardian Spice. But I guess there could be one out there somewhere. I hope to never come across it. Now as for personal disdain, there are plenty of things that have either ruined something great, or are so reprehensible with their messages that I could see myself hating them more on a moral level. But purely storytelling wise, High Guardian Spice is in a league of its own. It's just a marvel. What do you think is the biggest problem with modern writing? I personally think it's ego. I agree. Most if not all issues with any script can be traced back to the creator believing their work to be good enough or even perfect way too early. Critique, scrutiny, redrafting. 
That is the only way to hone any story into its most pristine form. Naturally, many people don't have the mental maturity to handle criticism, so they turn their backs on feedback, never growing, never learning. Other part of ego that eats away at writing is how self-satisfied and agenda-driven many mainstream writers are. Oh, my work has a message. It doesn't matter if my story is full of plot holes and all my characters have the charm of an infected bunghole. But that's the thing. Most people in the entertainment industry are in bed with the political establishment and all the adjacent organizations. Alarming amounts of modern fiction is just unapologetic propaganda made by people who literally think themselves better than the rest of us common plebeians. So bundles of sticks go to hell. Good to know. Real talk. I do not believe bundles of sticks deserve to go to hell. In fact, I do not even believe there is such a place. And even if there in fact ends up being such a place, I'd think that whatever supernatural entity is responsible for upholding it wouldn't give a damn about how many sticks are stuffed to any given bundle. There are far bigger fish to fry. Since you chap at anime a fair bit, I'm curious what your favorite anime actually is. I'm also curious which you consider the worst. There's a lot of options for both. Indeed there are. I think it's best to set the record straight here. Despite how much disdain I may seem to hold towards anime, it's not as if I outright hate the industry as a whole. I've watched a respectable number of shows in my time, and both enjoyed and disliked a fair number of them. The truth of the matter is that I've simply become jaded with it, if anything. How to put it simply? I see most anime nowadays as more preoccupied with being anime, rather than telling a story, if that makes any sense. From character archetypes to story premises, to the humor, to the feel, the look, the personality, the tropes and elements that are omnipresent in large parts of anime just take me out of the experience. It all just feels artificial, like corporate sludge, made to appease whatever specific taste the anime community has developed. Whenever there's a new show, I just see most of them as, oh, this is just this season's school romance, and oh, this is just this season's isekai, and this is just this season's whatever. They each have their own gimmicks, sure, but that's what they are, gimmicks. For this reason, year by year, I watch less and less anime, and even the ones I do check out end up being something older from my backlog, rather than the newest flavor of the month. I'm not saying that all of the shows coming out are outright bad, I have no way of knowing that. But I have already developed a fairly robust scanner for these sorts of things, and I can reliably tell from a glance whether or not I'll enjoy any given thing. And just for context, I am a busy adult man, and the time investment of a dozen plus episodes for a story that I'll most likely end up rating as average, at best, just doesn't seem like time well spent. Now as for my favorite anime, I would have to give that honor to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The original manga is my all-time favorite, so a true adaptation of it wins the anime award by default. The characters are all awesome, the story is epic, the pacing is fast, every story beat has a purpose, the world building is solid, it's thought provoking without being preachy, and the philosophy of the series is simply beautiful. It's an all around tight and well crafted tale. It's everything I want from stories. Arakawa Sensei has created a fantastic masterpiece and I have nothing but respect for her. As for my most hated anime, well... First of all, I need to preface this by stating that I have not seen some of the most infamous anime out there. I'm sure the absolute worst one hides somewhere amongst them. But as for the ones I have personally seen, it's still hard to pick one. But I do have a vivid memory of one series utterly pissing both myself and Corpu off something fierce. A show called Gamers. It's your basic bitch school romcom. The gimmick in this one is that the entire cast are part of a high school video game club. The characters are boring and obnoxious, and the plot is as bland as you can imagine, with contrived love triangles and lame dialogue galore. 
One of my most hated tropes is the insistence of anime characters to act like confessing their attraction is the hardest thing in the universe. I despise it. It's just an endless loop of dilly dally shilly shally. An excuse to make the series go on forever, often leaving things unresolved anyway. It's painful to watch. They didn't even use the gaming premise to do anything. They play Persona 4 Arena for a whopping 20 seconds in one episode, and that's basically it. It was an utter waste of time. In fact, the script was so fucking awful at one point, and the characters flipped and flopped so fiercely back on their quote-unquote development between episodes, that we were utterly convinced that the episodes must have been released in the wrong order. And there you have it. If you wanna see a lame, boring, flavorless, uninspired waste of time, everything that's wrong with anime, then watch Gamers. Will you do any ranking in anime? I won't dismiss the possibility outright. However, I don't see myself making much anime-centered content specifically. If I watch something I feel like would make for a good video, then I'll do it. If I do talk about anime, it'll more likely be while talking about some other specific topic, like a trope or a story element. There's plenty of good references in the world of anime, both positive and negative. Can you talk about Kaito Joker? The hell is Kaito Joker? Okay, I see. Looks kinda interesting. 52 episodes?! Tell you what, if I'll ever end up watching it, I'll talk about it. What games do you play? In general, I like any and all kind of games. As long as they are well made. I have fun with basically any genre. My main hub for gaming has always been Nintendo consoles. I like pretty much all of their franchises. The unique ideas, the focus on gameplay, the polish, the look, the whole Nintendo flair, if you will. Mario Kart, Smash and Mario Party have always been my go-to games with friends and my special lady. Typically, I prefer games that have a slick and satisfying gameplay loop, minimal amount of fluff, a steady learning curve and a high skill ceiling. Especially nowadays when I have less and less time to play games, I tend to prefer the ones that are fast to pick up and play for a quick session every now and then, while getting steadily better and better at them. I would like to play more RPGs, both JRPGs and Western ones. I do love my stories, and there's no genre that's more focused on story. Cool characters, interesting worlds, a grand journey, that's my jam. But those are awfully time consuming, so I tend not to have time to finish them. The last one I played was Tales of Arise. It was pretty neat. As such, my absolute favorite genre of games would have to be the mini RPG. By which I mean jrpg s games that can be completed in about 20 hours, instead of the standard 50 to 70 hours. One of my favorite games in recent memory, and an archetypical example of this genre is Buck Fables. If you've ever played any of the Mario RPGs, this is basically a super polished, awesome love letter to those. It's fantastic, you all should check it out. What is your favorite video game for its story? And what is your least favorite video game for its story? Oof, so many to pick from. Some games are just so fantastic exactly because they are games. Something like Soma or Hellblade are masterpieces, and the stories would never work the same way in any other media other than video games. I was recently really impressed by Hades. That has a really cool story, especially the way it's integrated into the gameplay loop. I also really like the Sly Cooper trilogy, those are great, and I adore the original Ace Attorney games, and then there's the Radiant duology, and of course, Zack from Crisis Core has a very special place in my heart. But my absolute favorite would have to be the Mass Effect trilogy. If I'm forced to pick one, then the second one. The Mass Effect universe is simply one of the best I've ever experienced. All the history, the lore, the different alien races, the way everything interacts and is connected. It's so well put together and super interesting. The characters are awesome, many of them top tier bros and ladies, and their development is solid. And despite the fumbles of the third game, the ending especially, I'd still say it's a worthwhile saga as a whole. In fact, my favorite story arc for any character ever comes from Mass Effect. 
that being the tale of Mordin Solus. His journey alone would make Mass Effect one of my favorite stories ever. It's so great. I'm actually definitely gonna make a video about him specifically one day. It pains me that Mass Effect has been ruined and raped and left for dead. But hey, that seems to be the fate of all major franchises nowadays. Which brings us to my most hated story in a video game. No, it's not Andromeda, because Andromeda never happened. Even though it's basically a meme at this point, I can't in good conscience give that honor to anything other than Last of Us Part 2. From a purely narrative point of view, the game is broken in every way. It's a vile, hollow, subversive for subversion's sake, morally and thematically contradictory, ego-driven mess. The characters suck, the world sucks, the plot sucks, Neil Cockman sucks, modern Naughty Dog sucks, and I'm saying all of this as someone who didn't even like the first Last of Us all that much. I didn't feel personally hurt by the assassination of characters, and I could still recognize how absolutely fucked this whole thing was. This is the prime example of what happens when an unhinged man-child who thinks himself smarter than everyone else is allowed to do as he pleases. Worse, this game single-handedly exposed half the gaming media and influencers to be nothing but paid-off shills and yes men. Degradation of standards on full display. May we never forget and never forgive. What are your thoughts on Persona 5 Strikers? I have yet to play it. I was so burned by Royal that I never checked it out. I already had my problems with the story of the original Persona 5, but I did end up liking it for the most part. As for Royal, I thoroughly hated all the additions to the narrative, I even made a video ranting about it. Royal killed my investment in the Persona 5 saga, so I didn't feel the need to bother with Strikers. So I know you hate art being ruined, as seen in your Resident Evil 4 video. So what are your thoughts on the bastardization of the Demon Souls remake? I've yet to invest in a PS5, so I haven't played the remake yet. Though I would like to one day, I do like me some Demon Souls. As far as I've understood the problem with the remake, it's that the new pristine graphics and rearranged soundtrack take away from the murky charm of the original game, is that it? I would have to play the game for myself to give a full opinion on it, but I can certainly understand the sentiment. There's always something that will inevitably get lost in the translation when remaking anything. In worst case scenario, the remade visuals can miss the point of the original entirely, or just look worse by comparison. I would assume that the gameplay itself is better at the very least, more in line with the more recent Soulsborne games. But that's the annoying thing about remakes. Often there's a lot of good additions and changes, and also a lot that's strictly worse. So we end up with two versions of the game, neither of them being the definitive experience in a lot of ways. I guess it's sorta of the same thing as what happened with Wind Waker HD, where the Wii U gamepad is a great addition, and some of the fluff is removed. It's just too bad that the bloom killed my eyes, and the cell shaded art style is gone. It's actually really annoying when a remake ends up as a side grade to the original. The best thing to do, in my opinion, would be to do something similar to Halo Anniversary where you can shift freely between the old and the new visuals, or just outright package the old version of the game together with the new. It shouldn't be that much to ask. Do you play D&D? I have not once tried any tabletop RPG. Treasure Planet Video when? One day for sure, I really like that movie. It's criminally underrated. In fact, I would go so far as to say it is the best thing Disney produced during the double O's. I'll do a video on it as soon as I'm able to type out a script that's actually worth it. This is one I want to be top tier. What is my favorite movie, and have I heard of the Metal Gear series? Yes, I have played the Metal Gear games, though it has been a good long while. I've played 1, 2, 3, 4, and Revengeance. 
And I remember liking them all well enough. Three is probably my favorite. Haven't touched five or any of the handheld games. My favorite movie of all time has to be Wally. -E. My reasons? All of them. The narrative, the world, the themes, the animation. Chef's kiss all around. It is pristine in every way. It is an utterly gorgeous film and the definition of charming. And the one thing I appreciate the most about it is the protagonist himself. Wally -E is such a likable and well-defined character even with practically no dialogue. The movie is my go-to example of show don't tell and I simply adore it for it. I love the movie so much, I literally made my first video on it. I've since removed it, because it was my first, and kinda shit. I'll one day make a proper video discussing the movie at length. But for now, I have to hold back from gushing about it too much, because I'll otherwise never stop. Who is your one favorite superhero, and your one favorite supervillain? Disclaimer, I am not a comic reader, so my affinity with any superhero comes from the adapted media. That being said, it would have to be a toss-up between Batman or Spider-Man. Simply by the sheer amount of content I've enjoyed featuring both of them. I think I'll have to go with Batman, but only by a small margin. I like the lore, the setting of Gotham, the extended Bat family, it's all really cool. In general, I like the gadgeteer archetype more than the strictly super-powered heroes. I like it when characters are smart and tactical first, and brawny as a bonus. My favorite incarnation of Batman is the Kevin Conroy animated version, especially as a part of the Justice League. For me, he's the perfect mix of brooding and charming, and he bounces real well from the rest of the cast. His development and contrasting relation to Clark is great, I really enjoy that. One comic character I would actually really like to get into more is Daredevil. His concept is just fantastic. A lawyer vigilante? That is so fucking cool. There are so many stories you can tell with a premise like that. I have read The Man Without Fear by Frank Miller, and I really like that. But I haven't read or seen much of him in other stuff. I actually have yet to watch the Netflix show. Have heard mixed things about that. Now in general, it is my understanding that the lawyer stuff doesn't get nearly as much attention as the blind adventure part, so that's kind of a shame. I think a balance between the two, I mean like really diving into the letter of the law and crafting stories about justice and morality based around the cases themselves would be really interesting. So yeah, consider Daredevil as a honorable mention of sorts. As for villains, my favorite type of villain is the schemer in plain sight. The corporate CEO or philanthropist who is secretly a crime lord. Kingpin, Lex Luthor, that type of thing. I like the idea in part because they feel like people who actually exist in our world. Liars and traitors and deceivers. The people above the common folk in their ritzy towers who seem larger than life and present themselves as champions of progress. All of them have skeletons in their closet, no doubt about it. Now as for absolute favorite, I would have to give my vote to Lex. I thoroughly enjoy that scheming prick. He plays the facade to absolute perfection. He's got brains, endless ambition, and the dark soul needed to chase his dreams. In particular, I enjoy the contrast between Lex and Clark. Superman is seen as a beacon of hope, a champion of the people, all of the people. And he truly is. The unyielding sense of justice, equality and self-sacrifice is the core of Superman. Meanwhile, Lex does his best to present himself as an admirable, noble person, but it's all a lie. Everything he does is for himself. That clash between someone who is utterly incorruptible and someone who is corruption incarnate is what makes the two play off so well from one another. What is your favorite TV show? And what is your favorite cartoon? Hey hey, two for one. As it so happens, my favorite TV show of all time is also my favorite cartoon. 
South Park is the one show that has consistently made me laugh for decades. Many of the old episodes are absolute purest of the pure comedy gold, timeless and eerily relevant even today. The one thing I appreciate the most about the show is the fact that it makes fun of absolutely everything and everyone. No one is safe. It doesn't take sides, it has no hidden agenda. It's just pointing out the absurdity of our insane world while having fun. What is your favorite song? Anything by Muse. But seriously, that is a hard question. There's honestly so many great songs, it's painful to pick just one. I do like all kinds of music, though most of my favorite bands tend to be alternative rock groups, all with unique distinct musical aesthetics and a healthy amount of pop sensibilities. That's a genre, right? Anyway, out of all these discographies, out of all my favorite songs from my favorite bands, I would have to pick Free Will by Rush. The tune is joyful and bouncy, mellow and carefree, with an interesting and quirky note structure. It sounds wholly its own. I like the theme and philosophy of choosing one's own path. We are all free to mold our own destinies. I firmly believe that. Some people may choose to surrender themselves to the whims of fate, settle for the hand they've been dealt. But not me. You can choose a ready guide in some celestial voice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You can choose from fandom fears and kindness that can kill. But I will choose a path that's clear. I will choose free will. Good stuff. What are your thoughts on the Sonic franchise? And any war movies that you like? I consider myself a casual Sonic fan. I've played most of the mainline games, had fun with many of them, haven't touched the most recent entries, I prefer the 2D stuff, my favorite game is Mania, I'm not deep into the lore, I have never read any of the comics or the like, most of the stories in the games are... well, they are there. Sonic 06 is one of the most hilarious gaming experiences I've ever had when I decided to view it in the same way one would watch The Room. Me and Corpu had a lot of fun bumbling through it. Hot take, the soundtrack of Sonic 06 is actually disgustingly underrated for how good it is. I'm serious, it's greatest of all time material. Though to be fair, all the games have fantastic beats. Corpu loves all the adventure era vocal tracks especially. She has a soft spot for corny J-pop and the like. I thought the Sonic movie was... fine for what it was. The sequel looks to be adapting more stuff from the games, so that's neat. Yeah, I like the blue blur fine enough. I just wish that Sega would treat him better. As for war movies I enjoy, Saving Private Ryan is an obvious pick. I recently watched The Outpost, that was pretty good. I liked Hacksaw Ridge. And 1917 was fan fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed that. What's your favorite genre of fiction? To cast the widest net possible, my favorite genre would be action-adventure stories set in any type of science fantasy universe. I like my stories with a balanced mix of drama, action, humor, intrigue and romance. Just great characters interacting with an interesting world and high-stakes situations. Full Metal Alchemist is a prime example. As a recent example, I was really impressed by Arcane. I've actually never played a single match of League, so I was surprised just how much I ended up enjoying it. Some solid character work and a real cool world. Now in terms of aesthetics, I tend to prefer my science fiction and fantasy with a kind of rugged edge to it. A clunker chunker feel. I like to see bulky machines, core steel, rivets and bolts sticking out of them. Like the people scrounged up the things they have from scrap. That just looks cool. I much prefer that instead of everything being smooth and clean and iPod-like. Stuff like Ratchet and Clank, Firefly, Steam World, that stuff looks sweet. Now aside from pure fantasy, I also have a soft spot for a good mystery. Detective stories and the like. Especially when the main character is charismatic. 
What kind of movies would you recommend people to watch if they want to learn stuff about storytelling? I remember you mentioned Lord of the Rings as an example of amazing storytelling. Any other movies that you would advise to watch? To be frank, any story can be useful as a learning experience. For example, you can learn a lot of what to avoid by watching High Guardian Spice. But as for positive examples, I would generally advise any aspiring writer to watch movies from the same genre as they are planning to write. Something you yourself enjoy. Analyze what works, and more importantly, why it works. What are the key elements that give the story its identity? What is the core? It may be a single character, a scene, a theme, or just a specific line of dialogue even. What parts are worth emulating? Find that, and you are at a good start already. But for something more specific, I would recommend the following lessons. If you want to learn how to do fast and effective characterization, as well as how to build a character-driven story, all inside a single room, then watch 12 Angry Men. If you want to learn how to write dialogue that's witty, charming and character building, watch Casablanca, Atlantis, DreamWorks Simbad, and Kingsman. If you want to learn how to introduce fantastical science fiction elements to your world, and then actually follow through, and take them to their logical end point, no matter how unpleasant it is, then watch her. If you want to learn how to build up tension with nothing but people sitting at a table and talking, watch Inglorious Bastards. And if you want to learn how to make your main character likable, and how to dispense lore about your world, all without a single line of dialogue, then watch Wally. Seriously, all of you watch Wally. The first 20 minutes are some of the most effective characterization and world building there has ever been. Show don't tell incarnate. Can you say something in Spanish? Buenos dias, encantado de verte. Esto es literalmente todo lo que puedo decir en español. I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. I've read a lot of comments that say that if they made High Guardian Spice, but removed Rosemary, Sage, the elf that nobody remembers, and focus on Snapdragon, the Axe Girl, Parsley, and Slime Boy, the show would be better. Do you agree? Well, it sure as hell couldn't get any worse. That said, I don't think a change of focus would make the show any better since it would still be written by the same people. It would still be bad. It would simply be a slightly different brand of bad. What is my daily routine? Wake up, get some coffee in my veins, clock into work, try to make myself useful, clock out, get some writing done, some editing, kick back and chill with my special lady. Repeat. Nothing outstandingly out of the norm. Would you ever consider doing a ranking and review type video for your favorite franchises, be it MCU, X-Men, Star Wars, etc? It would be nice to talk about something I actually enjoy for a change. It may not seem like it, but I do enjoy enjoying things. Sure, definitely. Someday. What are your top 10 favorite works of fiction? Why don't you just ask which of my billions of cells I like the best? There are so many awesome stories out there. Choosing favorites between them implies that I could even function, or be the person I am today without the rest. Pain. Let's put it like this. Here's 10 pieces of media I can wholeheartedly recommend to you all. I think everyone should experience these at least once. Some of these I already revealed as my top favorites, and the rest hold a similarly dear place in my heart. So, in no particular order, Full Metal Alchemist, Lord of the Rings, Wally, -E, Mass Effect, Soma, 12 Angry Men, Whiplash, Requiem for the East, Tatami Galaxy, Final Fantasy VI. Do you plan on making any long-form critique videos like your Mulan one? Technically, I'm currently making one, in the form of my High Guardian Spice breakdowns. Once I'm done with that clusterfuck, I'll stable all the parts together into one massive critique monolith. I simply decided to take the process in parts, 
to segment the drain on my sanity and to get some content out there in something that resembles a steady schedule. I would like to make long videos, thorough videos. If there's something worth saying, I like to get it all out. So yes, there will be long form critique videos in the future. On what topic and when, that will remain to be seen. What do you plan on talking about more? Movies, series, cartoons, anime? or any dumb and poorly written piece of media that you find. That's the thing about YouTube. Everyone has to have a niche. Or at least it seems to be the most beneficial for optics. People come to you for some specified thing. In all honesty, I've found it hard to come up with my own niche. Storytelling is my passion, but that is an extremely wide topic. On the other hand, I don't want to limit myself to any specific type of media. Nor do I wish to be the guy that hates things. I think it's equally important, if not even more important, to appreciate, praise and analyze fantastic pieces of media. The one thing I have always tried to do is insert my ideas on storytelling to each of my videos and lay out some tips and such. The whole reason I decided to rip into High Guardian Spice wasn't because I care about the show, or the creators, or even that particular type of media specifically. I decided to tackle the show because it is a fantastic jumping point into discussing a variety of storytelling topics, the show itself acting as a horrid example for reference. That is fun for me, and I think you guys enjoy that as well. Reading the comments on my videos gives me the sense that my audience is largely comprised of like-minded people. Many of you like to think about stories on a nitty-gritty level, the same as I. There's not much of turn off your brain going on, which is always good. So here's what I'd like to do. I'll obviously keep doing my High Guardian Spice rants as a series until its inevitable end. I'll also do videos on whatever random topic I feel like doing at the time. But alongside those, I would like to do a series highlighting and discussing different aspects of storytelling. Character archetypes, tropes, narrative structures, themes, stuff like that. I would like to hone in on a specific element in a specific story and examine that, explain why it works or why it doesn't. A sort of how-to guide to storytelling. I can find examples any and everywhere. Movies, cartoons, anime, video games, comics, anything goes. That would free me to talk about whatever genre or type of media I want, while giving my content a unifying focus. I got some topics in mind already, but of course I would be open to suggestions. If there's enough clamoring for any given topic, I'll most likely take a look at it. And... That is it. My mailbox is empty, so to speak. That was fun. I had fun. Did you guys have fun? I hope so. I'd like to thank each of you from the core of my soul. For the comments, the subs, the questions, for showing interest in the things I do, and just for sticking around to listen me ramble. I know I'm still a tiny, tiny creator in the grand ocean of YouTube, but I want you all to know I appreciate the support all the same. Whatever reason you may have for being here, I hope I can keep you entertained. Now there is still one more inquiry. People have been asking for a way to support me in monetary ways, so... ta ta ta, -ta. I have a Patreon now. Huzzah! With mere pocket change a month, you can offer encouragement for both myself and Corpu. No pressure, I know money is tight nowadays, so only donate if you are fully able and willing. The production of videos and the like will remain as it is. I'll do my best to get stuff out there as often as I can. Going full time is the dream, obviously, and with enough support, Anything is possible. The link is in the description, so please have a look. I've also put up links to my other stuff, the stories I've created alongside Corpu, our book project Destiverse, 
and our webcomic Revondulet. I can say that they are both pretty neat, so go have a read. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And with that, I finally exhausted all I had to say for the time being. Stay tuned. More stuff coming out soon-ish. Thank you so much once again. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you all in the next one.